Hello everyone. We're working hard on getting new allies in Zandalar. We're also working hard on the war campaign against the Alliance. This is war, and we accomplish nothing by simply adding the Zandalari to our ranks. We eventually need to crush the Alliance. Our efforts are led by Nafanos Blightcaller, champion of the Banshee Queen. In life, he was the first and only human ranger lord amongst the Far Striders, despite voices amongst the High Elves not being too happy with a human in their midst. Sylvanas did very much enjoy his company though, and when she regained her free will after being turned by the Lich King, she sought him out as one of the first to break the control. Fiercely loyal to his Banshee Queen, Nefanos will do everything in his power to please his Dark Lady. To assist him with that, we have Garona Half Orkan on board of the Banshee's will. Make yourself. We have assembled an elite group to execute the Dark Lady's orders. Overseeing this group is Garona Half Orkan. She will orchestrate these missions with your help. Champion? This half-orc, half-drenai. She was once upon a time ensorcelled by Gul'dan and his Shadow Council. Her skills were directed at assassinated enemies, and when the Horde ventured through the Dark Portal, Grona was right there with them. Because of Gul'dan's endless cruelty, she felt no love for the Horde, and actually befriended people like Ketgar and the King of Stormwind at the time, Lane Rin. Those magical spells that Gul'dan had placed upon her minds, they eventually forced her to murder the king, and she had to flee the city. But later on, when she explained to Khadgar what exactly had happened, he actually believed her. He even went as far as to remove those chains upon her mind, freeing her to go out into the world and claim her vengeance upon the Shadow Council. In Legion, we saw it as a member of the Uncrowned, the Rogue Order Hall, and now we find her amongst the elite forces of the Horde. It seems like she's been conscripted into service once again, to carry out yet another master schemes. She will do what she must, say what she must, to live another day. But sooner or later, this war is going to end, and we must be ready for what follows. Garona escorts us to our very first follower, to be sent out on a mission of vital importance. This follower is Arcanist Valtrois, a quite recent addition to the ranks, as the Nightborn joined our horde as a new allied race. Her first mission, that is to take care of the SI-7 infiltrator and stop the Alliance from interrupting our communications with the home front. This opens up the possibility to ask for reinforcements and recruit various Horde forces from Garona to accompany our commanders on their missions. These missions, like on the Alliance side, they tell a story all on their own, with achievements attached to them. It's all fine and dandy to recruit new allies in a brand new zone, but we can't forget about the war from back home. After Lord Ron, that takes place in that area, Eastern Kingdoms, with some of the highlights involving paladins led by Relay the Devout, attempting to purify the ruins of South Shore. Darius Crowley, marching a Gilnean army towards Hillspread, helping Horde refugees escape Tidusfall by creating distraction for the Bloodfang Pack, and unleashing that newly developed bioweapon on the seven Legion forces that are surrounding Shadowfang Keep. Kalimdor on fire, that plays out around Teldrassil, but also lets us know that Gallywix's massive cannon has not been forgotten about, and since the Alliance forces sabotaged it, we'll have to repair it. Besides fighting over dominance of the land, we also send out scouts to investigate why the Alliance has renewed interest in Black Phantom Deeps. They're still evacuating people from Teldrassil, overseen by Tentaria Silverglades, which we slay to sow chaos in the ranks, but apparently there are also still Night Elves streaming out of their nasses, which pose a threat to our troll allies at Shatterspear Vale. I imagine that some of them were able to escape the flames of Teldrassil, and they're still able to take up arms. Then, the Baron's Kalandor again has to stop the Alliance from rebuilding Tiragard Keep and scour the ruins from the Horde lands, while also checking out if Faramor can still be used as a base despite the lingering effects of its destruction. The magic of the Wailing Caverns that might be useful for the cause. Camp Tarajo has lain in ruins long enough. Our warriors are sent out against the Alliance soldiers who seize the Great Gate and their looters are punished. Meanwhile, the Steam Widow Cartel will not openly declare for the Hordes, yet they still provide a vital stream of supplies. We must prevent the Alliance from discovering these smuggle operations. We'll also keep an eye on the vengeful Night Elves that are planning a campaign against Orc Damar. Those are some of the highlights on what we send our followers out to do, and if you want to know every single mission, the articles are linked down below. Back in Zandalar, on the Banshee's will, we need to establish outposts within Alliance territory, namely Tiragard Sound, Stormsong Valley, and Drasvar. Our enemy spreads its influence throughout Kul Tiras, recruiting new allies to fight against the Horde, and it's the Banshee Queen herself that shows up to check if everything's in order. Try not to give my queen. Is everything in order? Yes, my lady. The Banshee's Whale is prepared to depart at a moment's notice. Good. 
Work with our champion to determine where we will secure a foothold first. As you command, War Chief. See it done, and dispatch reports of your progress to me. We will not fail you. Safe journey, my lady. Dread Admiral Tedersail, who also joined us in the Stormheim during Legion. She's the one who sails the Penshee's Wheel, one of the Dark Lady's finest ships. She may not be much to look at, but she's tough and scrappy. Her captain isn't half bad either. Let us sail to Tedegard first, where we join Shadowhunter Tijin and get friendly with the local pirates. Tijin has been with the Horde for a very long time, not afraid to travel either, as he joined them in Outland and Altena Draenor. And here we see him making contact with a pirate crew that's not too happy with the way the things are going. There was a time when the pirate life was a free one, but now the crews are selling their souls to sail under the flag of Lady Ashvane, something that Owings and the Foxhill Freebooters they're not exactly down with. Our goal is simple. We're going to help the mutiny succeed, and in return, she'll allow us to stay here as a foothold for our attack. Step one of causing a mutiny, that's to make its leadership seem incompetent. She hates to say it, but we're going to have to muck up the booze and spike the kegs of grog. The way we go about it, it's, it's not exactly what she had in mind, but you know what? Sure, our way works too. She's not the only one that's not too happy with selling out, so perhaps we could find some authority figures among the freebooters who'd also be down with joining us. She forged some letters in the captain's hand, which we deliver. Boatswain Tarin could recognize Owing's handwriting anywhere and foolishly tries to kill us. Navigator Swink would never insult his alliance roots by siding with the Horde, but Quartermaster Killian... He's a lot smarter, he really likes his job and he wants to keep doing it on his terms. A little mutiny might just do the trick to make that happen. After stealing some cannonballs and modifying some cannons for us to use, we blow up some of the smaller rowboats in the harbor and then it's on to the main event. Captain Renix sits in his cave, readying himself to sell their souls to the Ashvanes. In battle, we can see that Ashvane already has her claws deep within him, as he guzzles down Azerite Potion, which makes him bulk up. And he has Azerite infused grenades, which he's not afraid to toss around. His death passes on the captain title to Owings. Has a certain ring to it, doesn't it? And she is a woman of her word. The Horde is welcome in her port. Look at this place. We got the pirates, a location close to the Kalterian capital. I think we should be pretty proud of this one, Tishin tells us, and he's so impressed with our skills in parlaying that he decides to become our next follower. Back on the ship, Navanos is quite happy with our new location, and the pirates are not a boon. If we ever need some bodies to fall and search for us, they will definitely do. Now before we set out to secure our second base, we have Etric, who knows that this war, it will not be won with strength and might alone. This veteran of the Horde, he has seen its fair share of warfare, starting all the way back to the founding of the Horde. An orc of pride and honor that had to deal with the corruption within the first Hordes, and later he gladly joins Thrall's Horde as he reformed it. He would play more of an advisory role to the warchief within the Hordes, but his skills with a weapon, they're still out of this world. He has fought in many, many wars, watched heroes and cowards alike bleed on the field of battle, but this war feels different. It tests more than our metal and skill. It tests our hearts, our faith in one another. Whatever comes, the Horde will injure. It must, and to help make that so, he offers upgrades for our adventures. Handy for our next adventure, as that sends us to meet with another legendary hero of the Horde. We're sent to Stormsong Valley, where they've established and fortified an outpost called Warfanghold. Yet the Kaltiran forces, they're not giving up their land so easily. They need reinforcements, and it's clear why the moment that we arrive, mighty tentacles assault our ships, and the enemy, it has pushed their men into the shore. They're trapped between certain deaths on both sides, so High Warlord Kromush, an orc very loyal to Sylvanas, he has us jump into a cannon and start laying down some covering fire. With the beach cleared out, our forces should have a bit more breathing room, some time to heal the injured. Now while we move inland looking for Rexar, instead we find his companion Julio with a massive harpoon sticking out of its side. It's a trap, 
and a foolish one at that. Because there is one thing that you don't do when it comes to Rexar, and that is messing about with his companions. Our champion jumps down and saves our hides. This Magnaval, half orc, half ogre. He also joined the horde from Draenor into Azeroth, but he got quickly sick of the corruption and betrayals that plagued the horde from within, and he decided to live out his days in the wilds with the animals that he could trust. Fate seemed to have different plans for him in mind though, as a chance encounter led him to the new warchief Thrall. He would help the son of Duratan with the founding of Duratar, eventually going as far as leading the Horde force into Faramor and taking care of Jaina's father, Admiral Dalen Proudmoore. He, despite his daughter's words, could not see that this Horde was a different one. Now his heroic deeds had Thrall invite him to stick around within the Horde, but Rexar knew that his place was in the wilds, but he would always be part of the Horde and be there when he was needed most. Sadly, despite the turmoil that the Horde has faced over the years, Rexar, he didn't really show up to help. Instead, we had him join the Unseen Path, which is the Hunter Order Hall in Legion. And now, under War Chief Sylvanas Windrunner, he is shown to make good on his promise. We can actually ask him, Rexar, what brings you to this conflict? I had found kinship with other hunters in the Unseen Path. We fought to defend a broken land, but now the Horn of War is sounded once again. When I heard she had returned, I had to answer the call. She? Who do you mean? Jaina Proudmoore. She once made a choice to spare us from her father's tyranny. I respected that decision and how difficult it was. But she could not forgive what Hellscream did to Fedamore. She turned her hatred against all the hordes. She went too far. Killed too many. Her quest for vengeance must be ended. You will fight Jaina Proudmoore? Her... The call tyrants, the whole alliance if I must. I love the Horde. I made a promise to Thrall that I would defend it. No matter who began this war, I will fight until it ends. Or I do. And this fight, they let us take on the forces that had taken over our outposts. With a strange object, they were able to summon the horrors that we saw coiled around our ships. Let's make them pay by killing the Captain Aura, who is part of the Faceless, and a whole bunch of their forces. We also turn their magic against them, and we use it to put out the fires, while we also save a whole bunch of the peons that were unable to evacuate in time. Quick and decisive work, by sound of the Warhorn, we let our troops know that it's safe to come back in and retake control of Warfang Holds. We shall purge these Kaltiran scum from our lands. Through countless wars, Rexar has learned that those who stand alone will fall. Let us stand as one. Together we will face anything that our foes send our way as Rexar becomes our champion. Two critical footholds established, only one more to go. It's time to venture into Drasvar together with Etric and Trey Prince Gellywix. Etric wants us to focus on gathering intel on the Alliance, but Gellywix, he can just smell the profits. It's all about the moolah for this goblin, the one who discovered Azerite first, and he now has information on a massive seam of Azerite that is beneath the land of Drasvar. Azerite means profit, and profit means winning this war against the Alliance, which means even more profits. On the glorious, extremely loud and conspicuous strike, we cruise around the lands of Drasvar, a land in which you really want to keep your head down. Curses, sacrifices and witches are plenty. Apparently that is Etrix's weakness, as he quickly turns into a Scooby-Doo figure at the mere mention of witches. Perhaps that's not so foolish after all, as the deeper we go inland, the more gruesome things happen to Gellywix's crew. Until we come across one of their corpses that has been mangled and wrapped up in a tree. Crimson Wood Witches, led by Sister Redweather, grown of the Crimson Forest, they try to turn us into their next sacrifices, and I believe that during this fight, they're actually supposed to attack Gallywix, which unfortunately did not visually happen for me. All the same, this little encounter, it smacks some sense into Gallywix. Perhaps it would be better to set up camp elsewhere. Maybe in the mountains, you know, like, not here, not where the witches are. En route, we actually discover that profit can still be made as even here Azerite is popping up. Now with the help of Hobbard Grapplehammer, bona fide genius amongst the goblins, responsible for inventions like Kasha Cola, Town in a Box, Lab in a Box and Gill Goblins. Yeah, those, those watery hostile goblins, they're apparently because of him. But under advice of counsel, he won't actually mention them, had nothing to do with them. His latest invention, the Wolf Recycle, that quickly gets him to Kresselfraz outpost, where pretty much the base is already done. All we need to do is unwrap it by enlarging the supply hut, which also accidentally enlarges her reds. We set off a pile of explosives to bring the fishing hut to life, 
and we reach into a wormhole to pull out our in, but not before we accidentally grab a interdimensional abomination. Ah well, that's goblin engineering for ya. Our base is set, time to call in the rocket troops. Now that everything's all set up around here, Grapplehammer, he could do with a new job, so he decides to become our follower. And with that, we've secured our three bases in enemy territory, but our war campaign is far from over. We must gain knowledge, power and experience until we can tackle the next part, so let's continue the story tomorrow. For now, thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys! See ya! Stay a while and listen. The zeal with which you attack the Alliance seems born of more than deference to your queen, Blightcaller. I once fought for their cause. The Alliance's insufferable arrogance has increased tenfold since they turned their backs on us. Turned their backs? When the Lich King's hold over us was broken, Sylvanas sought allies. Instead of embracing their fallen kin of Lordaeron, the humans spurned us, hunted us. So I vowed to hunt them. Ah, vengeance fuels you. I can appreciate that. Vengeance, contempt, call it what you will. When the last of his subjects has been slain and raised forsaken, the Boy King will kneel before the Dark Lady. And at long last, there will be but one queen to rule them all. Your strikes on Alliance targets have been most impressive, Garona. I admit, I wondered if your loyalties might be divided. Because I was once befriended by the young king's grandfather, I murdered him, if you recall. I am familiar with the tale. I also know that killing Lane Rin was not your choice. No. And you are doubtless aware that I have worked with the Alliance when it served my purposes. But I owe them nothing. The Horde is my home. Good. The Alliance deserves no sympathy, no quarter. Make them suffer, and the Dark Lady will reward you. I caused the downfall of one king. Perhaps it is time I ended the reign of another.